session definitely we will carry out one uh, discussion so that you can share your thoughts okay see i'm actually the time is running short i'm not uh, taking much time or taking much introductory time at the outset i'm thanking the new york university team especially professor anderson madam neelima abby and all beloved students for giving me this opportunity because this uh, this discussion is actually uh very fruitful not only for you people but also for me because uh after the discussion actually at the uh, after the last class i was able to realize that many of the thought provoking questions raised by students at that time uh actually it 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 reverberated my my thinking because they have asked me many questions many questions and such questions were so worthy also so that's why i have chosen the topic future of kerala migration at that time mean i have faced many questions about the future that's why i have uh, uh, selected this topic the future of kerala uh, migration thank you all for giving me this opportunity and let me uh, start the discussion see before going into my topic i think it would be my duty to give you an introduction about the two chairs which are being functioning in this campus one chair is bakke jayras boy chair for indian ocean studies and the other one is mk haji chair for migration studies see the bakke jayras boy chair is carrying out some research activities on the socio cultural interaction between between we people with the rest of the world through indian ocean routes and when we come to mk haji chair for migration studies we are carrying out research on international migration especially Ma, uh, migration from malabar region because malabar or malappuram malappuram assumes so much significance because malappuram district stands first in terms of the number of emigrants and in terms of the amount of remittances is also we are standing first so significant so the college bsm college as an affiliated college started two chairs and uh, bakke jayras boy chair is actually chaired by uh, professor ami kapil jayras boy actually the director of that chair is uh, uh, professor mohammad asif sir uh, he is he is currently running that bakke jayras boy chair and mk haji chair for migration studies is actually carrying out so many research activities on international migration and uh, see professor sirude rajan an internationally acclaimed professor Uh, on migration is the current chair professor of that migration and and he has carried out six rounds of kerala migration surveys in kerala it was started in 1998 in 2003 they have uh, done another survey in 2008 2011 2013 and 2018 and in 2021 after covid 19 we have carried out a kerala return migration survey also See in the 2011, 13, 18, and 21, I am also part of the survey. So, uh, what data available for migration migration from Kerala is actually this, this Kerala migration survey. 
So the sole data available about migration is my uh, Kerala Migration Survey. So currently, Yudhaya Rajan is the number uh, chair professor, uh, World Bank. He was also a retired professor of uh, CDS Trivandrum, a JNU center at Trivandrum. Uh, he is uh, currently visiting professor at Northumbria University and emeritus professor of uh, Gulati Institute of uh, Public Finance and Taxation. He is also chairman of the International Institute of Migration and Development. Why I am telling you? Why I am telling you this is because we presently we have some project works under these uh, chairs. See, my, myself and Asif sir have published uh, that, that book because uh, currently I am telling you more about the cultural and the social impact of migration. So recently we were published one book, it is on migration, mm -hmm. culture and identity. Myself and Asif sir. Uh, also we, we, we are, see two books were at the verge of completion and Ruthlet has accepted to publish those books. These are the two books, Emigration and Emotion is one book. Uh, myself, Asif sir and Irde Rajan, they, we together are going to publish it and another uh, one is uh, the social dynamics of migration emerging identities and culture in Kerala uh, 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 jointly uh, join workers of law among youth by um, uh, Bangalore Christ University Autonomous and uh, another the last project we are running is contributions of migrants towards the development of Kerala a project jointly by uh, this college with the uh, Calicut University chair, CH Chair for Migration Studies. See, now I am coming to my uh, topic. See, I have arranged my topic of discussion in, in four lines. I am going to give you an idea about migration, the history of migration from Kerala, that is migration since independence, 1947, since independence of India, 1947 to 1972. The second part, I am going to give you an idea about migration from the period 1973 to 2019. And of course, migration, what, what is happening to migration in Kerala uh, after the COVID-19 pandemic and the latest burning issue of Kerala's migration is uh, student migration. I will tell you in detail later. First. First, I'm going to give you an idea about migration from Kerala during the period 1947-1972. See, at that time, the migration from Kerala was internal migration. Or otherwise, we can call it as an elite migration. Elite communities of Kerala, especially the Nair communities. In terms of religion, we can call them Nair community. Brahmins, they were migrated at that time to different industrial centers of India. Especially to Madras, Bombay, Calcutta, Delhi and other metropolitan cities. They were migrated to these industrial cities and they settled there. Why migration at that time is called an elite migration? Because at that time, migration, migration was happened only among the elite community. Brahmins, Nayas and similar, similar upper caste communities of Kerala were educated people at that time. So they found easy to obtain a job at different, different uh, uh, industrial centers of India. So they started migration at that time and they settled there. We can see some sort of international migration also during, this, during that period because at that time when we look at the central Kerala, central part of Kerala, especially Pattanamdipta and Kottayam district, we have 14 districts in Kerala and central part it is covered by two districts, Pattanamdipta and Kottayam. When we look at migration from Kottayam and Pattanamdipta, we can see Christian community were migrated in Bali to uh, European countries and to the US. They started migrating. So they, and that sort of migration, it is not te temporary migration that we are seeing right now because presently Kerala is experiencing temporary migration because once the visa gets expired at GCC countries, they have to return. But during that time, during 1947-1972, migration happened to Europe and US, US continents and that migration was permanent. Christian communities, the educated communities of Syrian Catholics and the like, they started migrating to uh, Europe and US country and they said to the direction. So these were the, these two internal and international migration was prevalent during the period 1947-1972.
when come to the second phase that is 1973 to 2019 majority of the migration from kerala was happened to the gcc countries gulf cooperative council countries including bahrain iraq kuwait oman qatar saudi arabia and uae and people migrated in large numbers at that time during 1970s to these gcc countries mainly because of the of the drastic unemployment situation prevalent in kerala people at that time were unable to obtain good job productive employment here so they started migrating and one special feature of that migration was that muslim community was migrated in bulk at that time because because the muslims earlier they were not part of internal migration or migration to countries other than middle east because they were uneducated they were less educated and they are unskilled also they were not able to obtain good jobs at different industrial centers at, at uh, europe or us countries so they started migrating in bulk because they found it very easy to obtain a productive job in these middle east countries gulf countries so they they started migrating to middle east countries middle east migration was one of actually a marginalized migration yes since we can say that it is a marginalized migration because large number of marginalized people people belongs to lower caste community especially people of uh, uh, belong people belongs to muslim community people belongs to scheduled caste scheduled tribes ida was they started actually these all are different different religious communities categorizations in kerala so in india so they such people started migrating migrating in, in large numbers during that time and one special feature of such migration is that they are able to send remittances to home country to kerala on a regular basis so that's a, that's a great source of income for for the people of kerala at that time because they were uneducated they were unemployed in large and poverty was prevalent among them so they were able to alleviate poverty because of the regular sending of remittances to kerala see this is the major source of destination of people at that time see if you look at the table 89.2% of the total population from, from kerala were migrated were emigrated to gcc countries gulf cooperative council countries and other figures are actually meager 89% when we look at the second phase 73 2019 bulk of the population was actually migrated to gcc countries. why see these are the three reasons i told you earlier because the marginalized communities especially muslims started migrating during this phase why muslims started migrating they are less educated and unskilled they were not accommodated earlier in the earlier phase of migration but now they are able to obtain a productive job in in dubai in in saudi arabia in qatar in iraq so so they were able to obtain a productive income and more than that being muslims they know the language of arabic and muslims were warmly welcomed by gcc countries at that time so these were the three reasons which tempted people in bulk to migrate to gcc countries during the during the period 1973 to 2009 i think are you following yes yeah. see the reasons for migration the first one i told you unemployment rate in india was uh, in kerala was was the highest at that time this is actually the unemployment situation of kerala during 1970 71 unemployment rate was the highest in kerala at that time more than that i told you see this is the educational qualification of people at that time educational qualification see majority of the people belongs to either literate category or below middle class so the the the, uh, the educational qualification of of, of of the people of the people of kerala during 65 was this, this is the picture because they were either literate or they have only middle class education and because of migration kerala started shining or india started shining and even today this is 2022 figure in 2022 also india is the largest recipient of foreign remittances foreign remittances it, it it amounts to 
100 billion dollars in 2022 according to nomad world bank estimation see when come to we are discussing about kerala so when come to kerala this is the this is the number of total non residential keralaites and total remittances to kerala i have used 2018 data because i told you the only available data is KMS data. Last KMS was actually completed in 2018. Every five years we are carrying out uh, data collection. So last the completion was in 2018. Definitely we will carry out next data collection with Rajan. Myself and Asim are also part of that, that project. So we will carry out next session in 2020. 2020. Okay. So I have used 2018. This is the only available data. See, according to 2018 data, the total non-residential Kerala is where 34 lakh plus and total remittances sent to Kerala in 2018 was 30,000 plus. This is the figure I have given aside the, the, the total figure. This is the district wise data. Shall I move forward? See, this is the trends in the total remittances sent to Kerala. I told you six rounds of Kerala migration survey surveys were carried out from 98 to 2018 and this is the figure and the last figure is 30,000 plus this is the 30,717 30, crores of rupees were received by Kerala as total remittances. See this is the this is the household remittances of Kerala by religion. See major contribution of foreign exchange reserves to Kerala was contributed by Muslims. It amounts to 42.4 percent Second position is Hindu community, 37.2, and uh, the last position is actually 20.4. Why? Why the last position? Christians are standing in the last one because they are following. They are following a particular permanent migration, so they are not sending back remittances regularly to Kerala. Only their old parents are staying at Pakarandita and Kottayam, so they are not. They have big houses. They have big land holdings. So no need for sending money back to back to Potem and Patanatita is required. So they are not sending back. That is why their contribution is comparatively less. But they are actually earning more income when compared to Muslims and Hindu community. Okay. See, see in uh, look at this table. In 2014, the total share of remittances to the net state domestic product of Kerala is was 36.3. 36.3% half of the uh, GSDP, NSDP has been contributed by remittances. Now it, it has fallen because of uh, the, the negative effects that are being happening in GCC countries, especially on account of uh, localization, Southeast and all. Okay. They are not actually accommodating more people from outside. They are accommodating their own citizens. So that that local localization is happening. That is why the amount of remittances is actually getting low. See, this is the picture of remittances to India and Kerala. In the, in the, in the, in the, uh, this is the latest figure, 2020. See, this is the purpose by which the remittances have been used. See, ma a, a major share of the remittances has been used for meeting day-to-day -day expenses by the migrant family. Around 37.38% of the total remittances sent back to Kerala has been used for meeting day to day day to day expenses and 7.7 percent has been used for education see uh, look at the field uh, and uh, more than 10 percent has been used for repairing houses uh, uh, rebuilding houses and purchase of land also so this is the way by which they are using income as per 2018 data see this is the this is the educational qualification of migrants right now earlier i told you the migrants were only less uh, they, they are they are having only Literate, literate qualification or they are they have completed only middle class up to seventh class they were completed now it has been improved around 37.8 38 percent of the population they have uh, higher secondary degree or plus two degree and 29.1 percent they have degree and one one special feature of the educational qualification that we are seeing in kerala is that migrants are advising the family members their children to take some particular technical courses. Those technical courses which are required in, which are actually in demand there in GCC countries. 
So they are, they are advising their children to take such courses. And they are taking such courses and they are bringing, after completion of 18 years, they will get passport and they are bringing the children to, to Middle East countries. Okay, so in a sense we can say that migration in Kerala is chain migration. Because the once one of the members of the family get migrated, they will bring other members also to GCC countries. So it is a chain migration. See, this is the emigrants by age and sex. See, majority of the emigrants were belongs to the age group of 31 to 45 age. 35 to 31 to 45 age. <coughs> See, this is the this is the shift in the economic activity before and after migration. See, when we look at, I have marked two two figures. One two figures in red color. So the first one is private sector. See. 27.7% were engaged in private sector in Kerala. After migration, it has increased into 60%. And those who have migrated, uh, 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 before migration, they were job seekers. They were unemployed in Kerala, around 21.3%. Now, it has reduced into 0.6%. That means, clearly shows that people who are migrating in free visa or in, or in, or in uh, contra not in contract visa, not in employment visa, either they were able to to obtain some jobs in. So that, that figure is also this is the economic influence of migration during the period seven, uh, 73 to 2019 both at micro and macro level. By macro I mean individual level at macro level at least the whole nation or the whole state. See, remittances sent back to home helped such families Primarily to alleviate poverty. Second, to make a dwelling, a house of their own. Because earlier they were in a rented house, now they are able to obtain a house of their own. And a part of the income has been remittance has been used to educate the children. And part of the income has been used to get their sisters married. Because in, in Muslim communities, the population size is bigger around 9 to 10 members can be seen earlier and majority of, of such members were women members. So, uh, remittances has been used to get their sisters married and also to the remittances help to the medical expenditure of the parents and migrants with, with that remittance backup they became trustworthy and creditworthy and they are able to approach banks at any time for, for loans and advance. So, they, they are not taking capacity has increased because of their status as a migrant and women headship is also increasing because in the absence of male member, the female member of the wife is doing everything and she is empowered and she is doing headship and empowerment is happening especially among the orthodox community of Muslims because Muslim community is orthodox here, the women are not permitted to come forward but now the picture has changed. The women is coming for women. They are coming forward to meet the financial requirements, social requirements, political requirements of the, the community. So they, they, are, they have been empowered, and definitely uh, remittances at, at macro level uh, 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 also increase the consumption power of the people because they have sufficient income right now. They can use the income for for meeting uh, consumption expenditure and and the. First generation migrants where I told you they are less educated and unskilled. They want to change the status of their, their children. They are providing better education to their children. So investment in education and health is increasing day by day. That is why we are saying that Kerala has a status, social status at par with many of the developed countries. And we call it as social, uh, Kerala model of development. The social sector achievement we have achieved so far is popularly called as the Kerala model of development and remittances is the only backboard behind achieving that particular status because we Kerala doesn't have any agricultural backing, Kerala doesn't have any industrial setup, we have service, we have improved our service sector performance mainly because of remittances. See, this is another macroeconomic impact. Kerala is providing positive influences of migration not only to the migrant family but also to non-migrant families also because non-migrant families are also benefiting out of migration. 
See, at the social front also, remittances has influence. Social remittances, I, I think you, you might, you are familiar with the concept. Social remittances are the ideas, behave, behaviors, identities, and social capital. We are, we are borrowing from destination countries to home country. We are, we are transforming such culture to, to our own state. So, so in, in, in ways of social capital also, we, we are improving a lot. Because highly successful migrants, when they come back to uh, Kerala, they started donating more income to Jahaz, the, the, the Masjid Committee, in order to get status as a successful migrant. They started contributing more income to build new uh, masjids, new, new mosques. You can see many mosques in Malapuram. While you are coming, you can see on either side of the road, you can see innumerable number of masjids because many families, they want to show their home as a migrant, successful migrant. They are contributing to Muslim community. They are providing more income to such social activities. And the Mapula dress that we have, actually 30 years back, the dress system is not this uh, Parda system. Malapuram doesn't have that Parda system. Actually, it was copied from many of the GCC countries, especially from Saudi Arabia. It was copied. Similarly, the food system in Malabar, it is not the food, the right now we are pursuing a food system which is at par with many of the GCC countries because it is the influence of migration. Especially, what I am telling is, it is especially true in either See, these are the cultural influences. Yesterday, Afik sir has shown you uh, that stick dance. Its origin is actually in Arabia because during the earlier period, we Ar Arabs started marrying women from Malapura, from Malabar. So that that cultural synthesis was happened. So many of the art forms in Malapuram right now, many of the art forms in Kerala right now has an origin in Arabian countries. And uh, and I, I would like to give you a, a little bit interesting information about Kakkupat or letter songs. See, as part of migration, a new cultural branch has emanated in, in Kerala, which we call it as Kathupat. Kathu, Kathu means letter, Patu means so. Kathupat means letter songs. See, because of the because of the separation of husband from wife, husband from kids, they, they, they started writing letters frequently. And the letters actually inculcates, it exhibits, it exhibits the emotional separation, emotional pain associated with migration. So it was it was reflected, and actually uh, the famous poet S. A. Jamil was the was the uh, originator in this field. He has uh, he has written so many so many uh, poems in Arabic, Malayalam, in Arabic, Malayalam language. See. Uh, those those, those Kattu part or letter songs are, are, are actually, we can categorize that Kattu part or letter song into three. The first one, letter song emanated or it, 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 it includes the pain of wife because of the separation of that, that wife from uh, male member, male migrant. So that was the first one. Uh, uh, you see, there, there are many songs, Hazit sir will give you, uh, will sing you. Uh, such songs, so such songs actually when, when wife is writing letters, such wife's Kattupat is actually reflecting the emotional sentiments. Yeah, in that sentiment she is actually telling her husband, you have to remember that you, you left me uh, just after three days or one week of uh, our marriage and you are staying there for the last four to five years. Why you are not coming back? I am a human being, I have passion, I have, I have feelings. You have, to, you have to take into account that. So that was the feeling included in, in such songs. And, and the second part is the refresh song written by the husband. The husband will tell in, in such songs, the husband will say, uh, the husband is saying that I am here not for me, it's, it's for you, you have to understand that. I am here, you are enjoying a lot at home because of the remittances. So I am here for getting those remittances, you have to understand. So these are the two types of songs. And, and the third category of song is the emotional sentiments of children because of the separation of the parent, especially father. So uh, the children, in, the, in such songs, the children is saying that you have to come back because I, have, I haven't seen you for the last three years, two years. You have to come back. And my mother is actually crying in her prayers. Every day she is crying. Uh, so you have to come back. So these are the three categories of letter songs which were prevalent at that time. And even today, those songs were, even the Jawaharlal Nehru University is conducting research, uh, 
in that field. They have a good record. CDS is actually its center. They have a good record of that. See, this is this is the this is the whole picture of uh, migration during the period 73 to 2019. Now I am coming to the third phase, the phase of migration in Kerala during post COVID-19. Post I am not telling, but COVID-19 period after 2020. See, it, the COVID-19 has affected the economy of Kerala vulnerably, very, very, very uh, adversely. Large-scale exodus was happened to Kerala. When we look at the figure, total returnees due to COVID was 14 lakh. 14 lakh, out of which 62.9% of the returnees were from GCC countries, out of which 21.45 are Malayalis, Keralaites. And the number of Kerala returnees from GCC countries is this, from Bahrain, uh, 12,000 plus, Kuwait, Oman, Kerala, Qatar, and UAE. These are the figures. See, when we look at the returnees of Kerala, Kerala, Kerala returnees from GCC countries during COVID-19, we can categorize them into two. The first one, the unskilled and less educated people who were forced to come back because of the closure of the small restaurants, workshops, maintenance maintenance companies, cafeterias and hotels uh, which were functioned at, at GCC countries. They were forced to come back because, because of lockdown. Because of lockdown, such small ventures were closed down and the employers were not able to meet the food, accommodation and other, other expenses of their laborers. So they were asked to come back. So they were forced to come back due to, okay. to COVID-19. And many of such returnees, they were actually very poor people. They came back in one day Bharat flight, a flight facility arranged by government of India at that time. And one, one day Bharat facility, it is not free actually. So many of the voluntary organizations, Pravasi organizations, they started providing tickets to immigrants and using that ticket, those tickets, they came back. And in some cases, they were not being able to obtain tickets because they were not part of any, any such Pravasi organization. So such, such members were returned by asking the family members to send money to, to, to their account. And using those, account, those money, they were returned. So their situation was very positive. And, and the second category of migrants is actually the, 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 the poor people who, have, who came to Kerala on leave prior to the outbreak of COVID-19. And in many cases, they doesn't have, they actually, they don't have visa. They were at the verge of visa expiry and they contacted, because of lockdown, they were not able to go move, move back to GCC country. So they contacted the employer. And in many cases, the employer said that, no, you, 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 we, we, we will inform you if we want you. If we want, definitely we will inform you. Now you have to stay at your home because... Like Hi. when migrants come back from those GCC countries, how does that affect the culture of Kerala? Does it improve the culture or it has negative effects on it? I think it would be, it would be good to answer together, right? One by one. You can two or three questions. Yeah, yeah. yeah that will be good. Yeah, anybody else? Hi, uh, thank you, Dr. Shabudu. Uh, my question is more on the economic side. You said that it will be a reverse multiplier effect of the economy and that the consumption has been the main component of the GDP of the region. Uh, what is the government doing now to limit uh, the consumption as a part of the uh, GDP of the entire region that to mitigate for this uh, reverse multiplier effect? Will you please repeat the question? Yes, uh, so to mitigate the effects of this negative uh, reverse multiplier effect. What the government will do? Yes. yes okay. how, how, does it, how is it preparing for that? Why 
last part of your speech you said that um, like for Kerala to develop and solve the problem of the student migration in that case they have to restructure education system so I was wondering about what restructuring education system means and how can we make it different cultural impact of migration, whether uh, the migration improves our culture or deteriorates our culture. That is the, that is the first question. See, see, in the first sense, cultural synthesis is actually good in all sense of it. Because what we have learned from GCC countries, has been purely applied here and in many cases, see I have mentioned you some of the Muslim culture uh, impact that, that was happening in Kerala, uh, the Parga system, the food system that I have discussed. See actually what I am telling you is the cultural impact of migration is in all sense it is good, in all sense because what we have collected from GCC countries has been purely, purely applied here. Say for example, see the tendency that the migrants has acquired from Middle East countries uh, is that they have they want to educate their children more than the earlier 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 period. Suppose suppose the cultural impact they have derived from DCC countries is not good, definitely they will not spend that much money for uh, getting their daughters educated because this is an orthodox Muslim communities in Kerala are, are were orthodox actually. They were reluctant to send their daughters for her education. In many cases earlier, female education was lowered. It was not happened earlier, but right now you can see in this gathering, around 98% of the total students admitted in this college are females. Right now the trend is there, and, and, and the scarves they are wearing, they are from Muslim community. Right now the parents are thinking that irrespective of sex, children will get education. So uh, the, the cultural impact of migration is actually beneficial for the development of Kerala in all states. Okay, it actually positively affected the state. Okay, yes. Uh, I understand that. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It just. Can you hear? Yeah, please. It's your turn. Thanks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, I understand that when it comes to like education, it's good because they go there, they understand that education is good, and they try to give that education irrespective of gender. But you said that, for example, um, Calicutta dance, for example, Gen Z's are not doing that in their weddings, right? So I was thinking that, oh, like maybe, um, for example, parents going there and coming back, and after them, students going, like, following their parents, would that affect what they think about their own culture? Like, would they think that GCC countries have better culture, let's be like them, yes. and would that affect negatively to the Kerala yeah, culture yeah, yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, I would. That's a good, that's a good, good question. See, see when, when you said that, the par, par, I told you, par, the one, the, in this first migration, the parents were migrating, and now the students are migrating, right? This is actually, this is actually a good symptom in the sense that they are migrating for education and acquiring skills. In that way it is good. But what was happening to Kerala is that Kerala is a state which doesn't have 
adequate income from agricultural sources as well as industrial sources. We doesn't have uh, income from other sources, but we are, we have so many hospitals, we have so many educational institutions, and all the such service sectors are flourishing out of remittances. But when student migration is happening, it is for one city. One, suppose the students are going out for getting better education and better skill. If they come back to our own state for, 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 for working here, then definitely our, our, our economic situation will flourish. We will be flourish we will be, because we can use them for better, better, better economic development. But it is not happening right here in, in, in the, the, the student migration from Kerala because they are migrating to European countries and they don't want to come back. They, they want a permanent citizenship there. So for that, your second question will come that is uh, how to restructure education. Right? See, actually, the educational system that we are following is uh, one of uh, traditional educational system. We are following traditional courses on, in traditional ways. But because of the, the uh, gravity of because of the gravity of the problem of student migration, right now the government of Kerala has appointed three commissions, three commissions to study about the restructuring of the revamping of the educational system in Kerala. And they have submitted their reports also. Based upon they have submitted the report in 2021. And now the government has started implementing it. And we are implementing our degree. We have we have restructured our degree courses in accordance with your in, in accordance with the foreign university system. <coughs> Say for example, as part of that report, we have permitted foreign universities to work here right now in Kerala. Many foreign universities are coming. They just like NYU campus at Abu Dhabi. We have also we have the, many many institutions are coming because they have, the government has started inviting so many educational institutions, foreign educational institutions to. To Kerala. First one. Second one is we are started restructuring our degree PG system of education. We are following right now 3 plus 2 system and which has been replaced as 4 plus 2 system. 4 plus 2, 6 years of courses and 1 year for internship. Just like you are visiting this, this campus, the students of this, this the, such, such uh, students admitted for such courses will, will be given an opportunity to visit foreign countries also, foreign universities also, faculty exchange program is permitted, will be permitted, student exchange program will be permitted in true sense, in true sense. That means students of this, this institute can visit, uh, uh, students who have completed two years of courses here can complete the remaining two years abroad. So that way of uh, absolute restructuring is happening in Kerala and we are expecting that that may reduce the outflow of student migration either or we, we, we will be able to balance migration with the inflow of other students. So that is what we are, we are expecting. Otherwise, a state without economic backing, a state without primary sector, a state without secondary sector, it, 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 it cannot survive. It cannot survive. Okay. We, we want a balanced system because we are running everything. In Kerala, we are running everything. You see, uh, on either side of NA, National Highway 66, the, the road you have taken to, to come to this, co this college, so you can see palatial building, very big houses. Actually, all such houses were constructed out of remittances. So when such activities are carrying out, I don't know much because when economic multiplier effect will happen, when remittances come to our country, definitely we are carrying out so, so many economic activities. When such economic activities were, are carried out, it provides employment to the people. Employment means further income will be generated and that income again will be used for consumption and saving. Problem. So multiplier effect will be will, will, be, will happen uh, as was happened from 19, since 1973 onwards. Because we have achieved this much of infrastructure development, this much of uh, construction development because of remittances. Because regularly we have received an income. But when student migration and permanent migration is happening, uh, what we the problem is, it is good they are getting some job, some income abroad. But the problem is, we are not able to obtain an income. We are unable to move forward our economic activities because we are pure, we hundred per, we are a hundred percent consumer state. Okay. I think Zebu is happy. Yes, uh, Zebu is happy. Uh, the second question is, uh, Muslim communities are backward, what, what is the reason? Right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. See, see. Uh, earlier, the days that from 1970 to 73 onward, they started migrating to Middle East countries, Sufi countries, mainly because they were able to obtain a productive job there, even though they were less educated and unskilled. They were less educated and unskilled because Muslim community, being orthodox community, basically they are business person. They are satisfied with doing some sort of business of their own. They are actually, they have a tendency from the traditional period itself, we can see that they don't want to get employed under an employer. Instead of that, they want to run a business of their own. They want to obtain profit because as part of our belief also, earning profit is good. You have to do any business, you can earn maximum profit. So, that, based upon that principle, Muslims show a tendency to run business units. But without having sufficient income, sufficient capital, initial capital, they were able to run only small industrial units, small business units. So, such un out of such units, they were able to obtain only lower income. And traditionally, traditionally, Muslim community were reluctant to sell female members of the family for education. They provide only basic madrasa education, the, the Arab education only, but they, pro, they prevent, earlier, not now, earlier they prevented female members to get educated. And in male cases also, I told you, chain migration is happening in Kerala. So they have been given only some technical education. We call it that PC, um, ITI, ITI. Technical education in, in Kerala it is called IT. Technical education will be given. Technical education means building, plumbing, uh, wiring, and similar electric, electric, electrification. Some acti such activities were given only, and those tended that belief that the attitude was the reason for the backwardness of Muslims in education and like that. Okay. Any, any other question? Okay. Just take one last question. Uh, his question about the motor oil. Government response. Uh, uh, what the government do for mitigating lower consumption? See, see. Actually, uh, I don't know uh, I, uh, whether I can say that. See. The attempt on the part of uh, government to mitigate uh, lower consumption because of the falling remittances is not actually happening in Kerala because because many reasons are there. Primarily, the first reason is we have taken huge loans not only from the central government but also from with the permission of the central government we have taken some adb loans also asian development loans from asia so we are running short of income if we look at the, the expenditure pattern of kerala 96 percent of the total income has been used for the payment of debt debt servicing burden is there upon kerala payment of pension pension so we are beset with only 4% of income for development. What can be done? What can what, what, what we can do for, with, with that 4% income? So this is the exchequer situation of Kerala. And we have achieved this much of social sector development and social sector development at par with developed countries because, only because of remittances. I, I have shown you a, a table uh, around 40% of remittances has con con constituted 40% of the total net state domestic income. So when it gets lower, definitely the government can do nothing. Actually, verbally saying, the government practically saying, the government can do nothing. It may it may create a debt trap. The, the economy will be in debt trap. So mitigating measures is actually lower. It's nothing happening because even now, see, I don't know whether I can say it. See, the government. The uh, government is frightening actually, uh, they, they are afraid that they are panicked that they may not be able to give salary after six or, uh, or three to six, uh, after three or four, depending upon, relying upon the, uh, that norms for, for, for getting each and every day activities to, to move. So that is, that is the real economic situation of Kerala. So 
Integration measures in pure sense is not happening, but we are maintaining, we are carrying out some sort of conversation, some sort of discussions with the board, GCC authorities, GCC king. Um, see our chief minister has visited the king there, uh, they visited the, 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 the sultan. So they, they are carrying out so many discussions to, to, to uh, place the return migrants there back. So uh, we are uh, positively anticipating that that may happen. Uh, by providing some sort of skill to these people, definitely they can be uh, re accommodated. We are expecting this. Okay, that's what happened. Narin is actually from the economics background. <laughs> Any other questions? No, no, that's happening later. We are having the Kabali. This we can go Yes. Do you want to show something? Well, just my thanks again for your uh, uh, insights and all your data, uh, and we look forward to the continuation of the program. That was fascinating, and I hope you all enjoyed that. We have an interaction with the students. So uh, now, uh, for a refreshment, uh, not any tea and coffee, but a kawali. Okay? So uh, our students will go to perform a small kawali for you. Please. from people uh, from other countries, especially from Nepal, Sri Lanka, Philippines, Bangladesh and Pakistan. They are, they are actually facing stiff cut cutthroat competition. And the third one is the GCC countries nowadays, they are showing a, a preference towards Filipini people to, to, to appoint at the front office. So front office have been, have been, have been, jobs have been denied for Keralites or Indians. So that sort of tendency is also occurring there. Some sort of discrimination, I think, uh, is happening. Of the interview I am telling. Uh, so that tendency is also uh, decreased the scope of getting employment further, further uh, going back or, or, or re-migration of the, the hope of re-migration to many of the immigrants <coughs> returnees. See, what are the problems right now the Kerala economy is facing because of COVID-19 return? The first one is return migration happen to may happen mainly to the less educated and unskilled people they have no save, sound savings and investment because they have only meager income there and in many cases they have taken loans and they are get, they are debt ridden and in many of the returnees many of the returnees they were completed 40 years they were in the age group of 40 to 49 years you know that for applying a post a government post in kerala we have to we have to be, our age, age, age will be lower than 40. So they are denied the opportunity, they, they have no opportunity at all to apply for a government government post, uh, okay, or, 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 or a semi-government post and more than that, more youngsters are actually currently existing in Kerala. The demographic dividend is existing in Kerala in the form of youngsters. So the government is trying, it's hard, hard, hardly trying to, to, to provide employment to the already youngsters. At, the, at that time, the, the return happened, so it was a great problem to the economy of Kerala right now. So what are the rehabilitation? See, my, my, my professor has given a separate uh, document to the uh, to government of Kerala because uh, he has been appointed to inquire about uh, the, the return problem that is why we were conducted the Kerala return migration survey in 2021 as part of that survey we were given these recommendations to the government the first one is enhancement of skill to the returnees in tune with what what skill they have, they, they have been in, in need of in GCC countries the, so because the government of India has set up a separate ministry right now in India it is called the ministry of skill development so using the potential of that particular ministry, government of Kerala started providing skill to the returnees. So that skilled persons will get employment abroad. Rather than uh, the scope of getting employment abroad uh, to the skilled people is much higher than the less educated or unskilled. So we are providing, uh, we, we have based upon the, the recommendation, we have started providing skill enhancement. 
and also government of kerala right now has started a flagship program flagship program is a prestigious program to provide financial assistance to the returnees to start self employment ventures and the third one is we have an organization in kerala to look after the needs of uh, the non residential keralaites it is called norca non residential keralaite sufferers is full form norca norca is functioning its board of directors are big shot migrants especially yusapalli you you are familiar with yusapalli because lulu mall is he is a owner of lulu mall ravi pulle ravi so you are coming from ravi hotel today right you are you are going to ravi hotel is actually the hotel five star hotel facility throughout india run by ravi ravi is actually is that is actually in order to get a arabic pronunciation he has used this that is actually ravi ravi hotel ravi is ravi pulla so it is ravi azad mopan uh, he is uh, Uh, a, a good big shot in big shot of migrant who is running so many health institution health hospitals aster aster medicine aster medicine so such such big shots were part of are part of the norca and they are running big institutes big uh, business ventures in kerala also we have uh, we have advised the chief minister we have given an advice we have given a separate proposal to the, the government of kerala that you have to advise these directors to provide self employment ventures to these returnees because many of the returnees are highly skilled persons they have good exports skilled in the sense that they have good exports uh, abroad so they, they 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 will run as the uh, ac ac vehicles they they can they can uh, they are they know how to store uh, uh, how to process food food items so they have they have good knowledge so such people will be accommodated in their lulu mall in austria medicine such people will be accommodated so that so that they they can be employed uh and they, they can be employed in some way or or others will be given pravasi pension others have been given some fund has to be set apart so that they can be provided with the pravasi pension so one one special challenge biggest challenge that kerala economy is facing right now is quantity migration which was prevalent from 72 onwards has been replaced by quality migration so quality or skill or education is must for migrate migration from kerala so so quantity migration will not we will not be any more can will will not be entertained by middle east countries because earlier when uh, an unskilled person he, he also will be able to obtain a job there but now the situation has changed quantity migration has been replaced with the uh, quality migration quality is must but right now we are attempting to provide quality inculcate quality skill and all we have started only but unemployment situation is very worse right now in kerala because these migrants started the agitating against the government because they doesn't they, they don't have any income at all right now because uh, covid 19 has 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 given has slapped them unexpectedly because we, they their income uh, source of income was you know, they they didn't uh, obtain a job at all so that that's that situation is existing in india and the th and the another challenge along with covid 19 right now the economy of kerala is facing another problem student migration do you think how student became student migration became a problem actually it's a problem for the economy of kerala right now serious discussion is going on about student migration uh, i don't know how fair uh, i am to tell you that student migration is a problem because from eight countries 14 students are here <laughs> so actually what i am telling you is student migration has replaced the so called distress migration of kerala because earlier migration is for obtaining bread and butter right now education is happening in bulk among students for obtaining skill and education so large number of students are migrating to europe and other other developed regions of countries of the world and india became a youngsters hub by, by 2030 with 14 crores of students according to the projection made by uh, uh, national sample surveys organization nsso and india's the one of the problems associated with india's growth rate is india faces a sluggish growth rate along with that the growth growth is growth we are following is a jobless growth we have growth but it is not providing adequate job sufficient job for the people so it is jobless growth and and in many 
कंट्री वेल अपने कंट्रीज में स्पेशली सेवन कंट्रीज विच आर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ द टोटल वर्ल्ड आउटपुट इन सच कंट्रीज देर इज अर्थ ऑफ देर इज अटेज ऑफ स्किल्ड मैन पावर skilled man power anticipating those man power those those idea people students are actually uh, started migrating to these regions these countries because once they migrate there they will get education after getting education they can stay there so they are actually aspiring for a permanent citizenship they don't want to come back to kerala and and uh, uh, see uh, i have given some examples in germany By 2030, it is estimated that 23 percent of shortage of skilled manpower will be there. In China, it is 3 percent. So students want to explore these opportunities and stay. They are identifying such countries and they are started migrating to these countries where, after completing their 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 studies, definitely they will be able to obtain a good job. So they are actually aspiring for permanent migration. Ah, they they are they are actually aspiring for permanent migration. Permanent migration has some problems. First one, in the distressed migration, definitely there is an inflow of foreign remittances to to Kerala. That is what that that, that is what we were witnessed till nineteen uh, since nineteen seventy three onwards till two thousand nineteen. We have sufficient inflow of foreign remittances, but permanent migration will not ensure inflow of foreign. remittances kerala being an economy purely depending on remittances it will create great chaos and kerala being a consumer state the consumption have the consumption habits will be will get lowered definitely it will, be, it will have a reverse multiplier effect when consumption will be lower saving investment and everything will be will get lowered so it will have a negative impact and the third one is student migration from kerala is Uh, a drain of wealth causes drain of wealth why because why because in many in many countries migration when my, when our students are going out when in from such countries when students are going out for uh, education uh, so, so sizably equal proportion is coming to uh, that country for getting education so uh, there there will be a balance the migration is happening in many developed countries when student by the outflow happens an inflow will also be there but in, in in the case of india that balance the migration is not happen we have outflow of migration definitely we have out, outflow but we have no inflow at all there, there are many reasons because of poor poor uh, educational facility might be one reason and the other reason is we uh, kerala doesn't have a migration policy at all it doesn't have a migration policy we have to do something to attract others also to to our own country but unfortunately kerala doesn't have a, a migration policy at all though we have a long migration history we have we we, we doesn't have a uh, so kerala doesn't have a migration policy at all so zero replacement migration is happening to balance the outflow of student migration from kerala it is a great threat great threat and another feature see when permanent migration is happening it provides agony pain uh, absence of care to the old parents who left behind it is common in the central kerala where migration is permanent in nature in kottayam and pattanamthitta migration is permanent and i have i have talked with many of such parents old old parents they actually father and mother uh, they, they they are there uh, with a big in, in a big house with a servant servant in many cases servants are not trustworthy trustworthy so they are they are there uh, that old old parents is also there and nowadays this is actually uh, uh, a hospital run by my sister she is a forensic surgeon in kottayam medical college and this is the board of her hospital and uh, you can see the fourth uh, uh, that um, the, the, the fourth one home care facility available home care it is common in pattanamthitta and kottayam right now the home care facility means the the, uh, the the children who are working in european countries they are they have contact with these uh, private hospitals and they are asking the doctors and nurses uh, doctor to 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 look after the parents old parents regularly they will visit the home uh, with doctor and team will visit home and they uh, do everything for the for the uh, parents and the bill will be submitted online to to these children and amount will be credited to the account of the bank so this is common the problem is actually what they need are, are there already this they they need care they need affection they need love 
it is actually not happening. So old age migrate or if if uh, this student migration will continue uninterruptedly or without any regulation, definitely Kerala became a land of hopeless old age people because the, the the students who are migrating they never want to come back in all cases they don't want to come back they want to stay abroad and in many cases they are finding a uh, pair uh, abroad uh, especially the students who uh, see i have i have uh, talked to a, a, a student uh, whom i met in bus while i am traveling to kolla my my district last week last week uh, last month he said that sir uh, i am uh, I have chosen one from girl who is uh, studying with me and we will get married, definitely we will stay there. So that tendency is continuing. What, what is happening is, uh, this uh, this old people, they have problems. Right now we are facing in, uh, that problems in Kotem and Bhattaram Delta. But if the student migration will continue, continue un uninterruptedly, definitely it will create a great problem to the economy of Kerala as well as to the old people of Kerala also. So what the, solu the solution to this problem is only we have to restructure our education system so that we will be able to attract our own students also we can attract some students from abroad also so that either we can balance student migration in a, in a positive way or we can keep students uh, to in, in, in Kerala itself so that, so that this problem will, will not uh, happen in, in, in large numbers. Okay, this is all about that. Uh, I beg your pardon because I have taken no time. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>